In February 2021, another tug of war started between Bangladesh and India over the coronavirus vaccine. Jinja Punawala, chief executive of the Serum Institute, a vaccine manufacturer in India, said the vaccine would be sold to others as soon as everyone in India gets the vaccine. According to a report in Deutsche Welle, the statement caused instability in Bangladesh. Because in the previous year, Bangladesh had signed an agreement with India to buy $30 million vaccines developed by Oxford and AstraZeneca. Many at the time called India an unreliable neighbor. Although Poonawala later announced that vaccine exports to Bangladesh would be hampered, the issue challenged relations between the two countries. This is not the first time that India has broken its promise, the report said. When India stopped exporting onions to Bangladesh in September 2020, it was requested to resume exports from Bangladesh. Due to this decision of India, the price of onions skyrocketed in Bangladesh and the government had to import onion from many countries and sell it in the market with subsidy. Trade, investment and transport corridors were discussed at a virtual meeting between the two countries in December 2020, but the issue of distribution of water of Tista River was avoided. Jaita Bhattacharya, a senior fellow at the Observer Research Foundation, an Indian think tank, says that the Indian state of West Bengal has a vested interest in water distribution. If the state does not change its position on Tista water, it will be difficult to share water with Bangladesh. Deutsche Welle reminds that while India is unable to resolve the Tista issue with Bangladesh, China has proposed a $1 billion irrigation project on the same river. Apart from the water problem, the shooting deaths of Indian border guards on the border between the two countries is also an unbearable issue for the people of Bangladesh. At the same time, China has allowed 97% of Bangladesh's products, or 6,200 products, to enter the Chinese market duty-free. The Chinese have also invested in a number of infrastructure projects in Bangladesh. Michael Kugelman, an analyst at the Wilson Center, a U.S. think tank, says the Chinese want to move closer to Dhaka by facilitating Bangladesh's exports amid tensions between India and Bangladesh over citizenship laws. Pakistan also wants to take advantage of this opportunity. In July 2020, the Prime Minister of Pakistan Imran Khan called Sheikh Hasina. While the incident did not cause much concern to India, its publicity in the Indian media showed India's uneasiness about Pakistan's possible development of relations with Bangladesh. President of India Ramnath Kobind is a guest on the 50th anniversary of Bangladesh Victory Day on the 16th of December. Earlier, in March of the same year, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited the 50th anniversary of Bangladesh's independence. Bangladesh's military contingent took part in India's military parade and the Indian military contingent took part in the Victory Day Parade of Bangladesh. Officials in Bangladesh and India have repeatedly said that India's relations with Bangladesh are at an all-time high. However, when the issues between the two countries are discussed, there is a lack of depth in the relationship. India had directly intervened militarily during the birth of Bangladesh in 1971, a century ago. India wanted to weaken Pakistan into two parts and bring a part of it under its influence. Has the goal that India helped Bangladesh 50 years ago been achieved? Is India being able to implement its interests in Bangladesh today? In response to India's statement on minorities in Bangladesh, when Bangladesh is saying that Bangladesh does not see any of its citizens as a minority, the difference of opinion between the two countries becomes clear. The question is, 
To what extent will this difference affect the geopolitics of South Asia and the Indian Ocean region? Arindam Bagki, a spokesman for the Indian Ministry of External Affairs, told reporters on October 14, the day after the attack on the Durga Puja shrine of Bengali Hindus in Bangladesh, that they had received reports of attacks on religious ceremonies in Bangladesh, which left them worried. On the same day, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh Sheikh Hasina greeted the leaders and representatives of various Hindu organizations and said that India should be careful not to do anything that could affect Bangladesh and hurt the Hindu community in Bangladesh. The Indian newspaper The Telegraph reports that Sheikh Hasina was speaking at a time when the Muslim majority Bangladesh was under the impression that the situation of Muslims in India had worsened since the BJP government came to power in 2014. The new citizenship law of the Narendra Modi government of India which is displacing countless Bengali-speaking Muslims in Assam as illegal Bangladeshi infiltrators, and plans to resettle Hindus in other parts of the country in Bangladesh known as anti-Muslim activities. In a meeting with Gulf News in the Middle East in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates in August 2020, Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina remarked that she did not understand why India had introduced citizenship laws in their country. Because there was no need for it, he further said that due to this law the people of India have fallen into many problems. India's Hindustan Times reports that India's citizenship law has caused considerable unrest in Bangladesh. The newspaper said three Bangladeshi ministers had cancelled their visit to India after the law was passed in the Indian parliament. The report makes it clear that the purpose of the Citizenship Act is to grant Indian citizenship to Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Parsi and Christian minorities who were forcibly deported from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan before December 2014. According to the report, Bangladeshi officials have expressed frustration over the naming of Bangladesh under the law. Relations between the two countries have been strained since 2019, with the ruling BJP leaders repeatedly calling for the repatriation of all illegal immigrants to Bangladesh through the implementation of citizenship laws in the state of Assam. The newspaper further said that Sheikh Hasina first brought the issue of citizenship law before Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New York in September of that year and for the second time in New Delhi in October. The emergence of an extremist Hindutva government like the BJP in India has come at a time when economic growth has given Bangladesh many options as a state which has never happened in the last five decades. There is deep suspicion that the relationship is being covered under a thin sheet. Sri Lanka has received a $200 million currency loan from Bangladesh without getting it from India. Again, Bangladesh provided assistance to Maldives. These activities are a reflection of the geopolitical aspirations of the people of Bangladesh. India is surprised to see Bangladesh's position in the foothills of the Himalayas amid military tensions with China in Ladakh. Bangladesh at that time did not stop at just standing by India. It has also improved relations with China on various issues. At the same time, Bangladesh's position has also given Nepal an opportunity to take a firm stand on the Kalapani border dispute with India. Not only that, the whole thing happened in such a way that India had no way of blaming Bangladesh. Because India has improved its relations with Myanmar by saying that it is in favor of Bangladesh on the Rohingya issue. It even gave Myanmar an old Russian-built submarine to balance Bangladesh's submarines. Myanmar has also sold Indian-made gold instruments for naval ships to facilitate the search for Bangladeshi submarines in the deep sea.
India wanted to balance not only China but also Bangladesh by increasing its influence in Myanmar. But what is clear now is that it is becoming increasingly difficult for India to control Bangladesh. After 50 years of helping Bangladesh gain independence, India is seeing Bangladesh's growing influence regionally, which is undoubtedly replacing India's influence. Pakistan's role will be very important here, because India will be forced to accept the influence of Bangladesh while reducing the influence of Pakistan. In order to maintain its influence in this situation, Delhi has to calculate whether it will embrace Bangladesh by accepting the reality of regional security. Or will it weaken its weak geopolitical position by creating animosity? Both these crises indicate that the geopolitics of the Indian Ocean is about to undergo major changes in the days to come. No matter how good India's relations with Bangladesh may be, Indians have always been skeptical about the development of Bangladesh's military power. However, Bangladesh's military might is not comparable to that of India. After Bangladesh announced plans to buy two submarines from China in 2016, the reaction of Indian thinkers was noteworthy. According to a report on India's WION television, China is strategically encircling India by selling submarines to Bangladesh. Because at the same time China has a strong position in Pakistan before India. It said the Chinese were strengthening their position in a region that India considered part of its sphere of influence. Indian security analyst Joydev Ranade says the submarine is a weapon whose main use is to kill secretly. It is not commonly used to catch pirates or patrol the coast. He said that while the Indian government did not see it as a threat, it would certainly be a cause for concern. Because with the purchase of Bangladesh submarines, the balance of naval power in the Bay of Bengal has changed, although the submarines are old. But Ranade does not think that as long as the Dhaka government is a friend of India, India has no cause for concern. Many in India have questioned why Bangladesh needs submarines, while India and Myanmar have no maritime dispute with the country. In an interview with Indian media, Catch News, former Indian ambassador to Bangladesh Panak Ranjan Chakraborty said that Bangladesh may want to buy submarines for various reasons. And China has also taken advantage of the opportunity to sell at a lower price. His idea is that since the Bangladesh government started planning to buy submarines in 2013, Indian officials may have asked Bangladesh why they want to buy submarines. Although he thinks that submarines will be a different burden for India's intelligence in the hands of Bangladesh. He does not think it is a threat to India. However, he says India will not be able to compete with China economically to reduce China's influence in Bangladesh. And since India has long been seen as an enemy in Bangladesh's military, it is difficult for India to replace China militarily in Bangladesh. Former Indian Foreign Secretary Kanwal Sibyl told India's Sangsid TV that buying a Bangladeshi submarine was the beginning of a new challenge for India. If Bangladesh had bought submarines from Russia, it would not have been a cause for concern for India. However, he did not think that the submarines would achieve any strategic goal in Bangladesh. He does not think that Bangladesh's foreign policy must be similar to India's. However, the concern is that where China's relations with India are not good, a South Asian country is showing solidarity with China's interests. This is a difference of opinion between Bangladesh and India in the field of international affairs. Bina Sikri a former Indian ambassador to Bangladesh, said that the relationship between Bangladesh and the people of India is so deep that it goes far beyond Bangladesh's relationship with China. He thinks that India should tell Bangladesh directly that it should be in Bangladesh's interest to be on India's side, 
not to create a new equation by adding another country here. Former Navy Commodore Uday Bhaskar, director of the Society for Policy Studies, an Indian think tank, said that from the moment a submarine is nearby, it is the job of a Navy to gather information on that submarine. Whether the submarine is a friend or a rival country, it is a responsibility to monitor it.